Today I'm going to be reviewing these, the Creative T30 Wireless 2.0 speakers with Bluetooth and NFC. So make sure to drop a like right now and subscribe because this is going to be a good one. So yeah, the Creative T30. Now with any of my reviews, we'll start it with a physical overview. On the front of the speakers, we have uh, our really nice glossy black finish and on the back of the speakers on the sides and the top and that we have a matte finish uh, the front is really nice it looks really nice it will attract fingerprints like nobody's business which is why you're going to want to handle it by the sides and the back thank god the whole thing isn't glossy plastic on the bottom of both speakers, in terms of speakers, we have a silk dome tweeter, which is going to provide those really, really nice crisp high ends. And on the top, we have a dedicated woven glass fibre cone drive, which is going to provide those more mid and low end sounds. On the top, we have their base port technology, i.e. a port and a hole in the top of the speaker, which is going to fire our base frequencies out the top to fill the room. Now this is a 2.0 speaker system, what that basically means is we've got two um, kind of speakers, a left and a right, so a stereo channel speaker system, and the zero means we've got no subwoofer. If we had 0.1, such as 5.1, we'd have five uh, front speakers, or five around uh, speakers and one subwoofer. Now this doesn't have a subwoofer, this has their base port technology that I mentioned literally five seconds ago. Now this is actually a really, really good thing. The base comes out the top, which many audio files might not be too keen on. However, I find that if you have a subwoofer, you put your subwoofer somewhere, it annoys the neighbors and the rest of the family. Uh, a lot of the, uh, the frequencies bounce off walls, can get distorted and that kind of thing. And often it's just unnecessary. Some of them have like bass like ports on the back and bass turns on the back and you end up putting the base so high it just like destroys your building and everybody hates you so yeah i think this is actually quite a nice move and it does work very nicely having them, them here as well is quite optimal placement because while firing upwards probably isn't the optimal placement for a uh, base to be coming out and those lower frequencies to be exiting it does mean that you're mixing the lower and the mid and the high frequencies all in the same place rather than having oh your mids and your highs are being created by your speaker here and your base is being created by your subwoofer which is all the way over here which is ultimately never good for the sound now on the front of uh, one of the units we have our simple uh, our simple two speakers, our tweeter and our cone. And on the other speaker we have the same once again but with a power button, a Bluetooth button and an EQ. So we have a volume up and down, it's a really nice silver knob and that same silver knob appears on the bass and treble EQ. Meaning if you're more inclined to a bass set of um, speakers or a bass set of headphones you can put the bass right up and that also affects the headphone output. So if you shove a pair of headphones in and change the bass on the speaker you will get more bass through the headphones. Now this actually doesn't let you ruin the speaker We've got quite a fine degree of detail here, so we can have just a tiny bit more bass or like a little bit more bass, but that's kind of it, which is good because you get idiots and it really annoys me as someone who likes good sound quality, you, you know, just crank the bass up to full and it literally just destroys the song. It gets rid of certain frequencies, it drowns out certain frequencies, you can't hear certain parts of songs, certain parts of vocals, certain parts of audio. So having this kind of detail is really, really nice. You can completely ruin the sound if you decide to turn the treble up to max and the bass up to minimum. So you have got a little bit of a, a difference going on there, enough to actually be, be audible and be noticeable and actually be useful, but you haven't got so much that you can just ruin the speaker by turning the bass knob up to full, which I really, really like. Talking of volume and that kind of thing, it, they are loud. They go very loud without distortion. They're very, very nice. They've got Bluetooth and NFC. So what the NFC basically does is you tap your phone on the top and then it automatically connects the Bluetooth for you without having to go through like a pairing process or anything like that. It's tap and your Bluetooth is instantly connected. The Bluetooth on these is actually quite reliable and quite fast. It is going to drain your phone's battery a little bit more than something else. However, you do have a 3.5mm input jack at the back if you did want to plug in it into a standard computer without Bluetooth or did want to plug it into your phone the normal way if you will. Now our speaker that doesn't have our EQ and that kind of controls on the left channel speaker has uh, just a simple uh, kind of RCA style kind of cable which is going to plug straight into the back of our right speaker with the EQ on and that's going to be powered by that right speaker. Talking of power, this possibly is one of the first gripes for me. You have a power brick, so you need somewhere to store the power brick. It's not just a cable that you plug in and bang, you're done. You do have a cable with a power brick on it. It lights up, shows the cable's on or plugs on, etc, etc. It goes into the back of the unit. Thankfully, however, this is a universal connector, so if you lose it or you wanted to get one without a power brick that's specially modified, for example, you could do so. But if you have one without a power brick, be careful because the actual unit inside doesn't have a power brick. It's reliable on the plug that is plugged into the wall. Talking of sound quality, how do they sound? 
amazing. Honestly, absolutely amazing. These things aren't the cheapest. They're coming about £90, so about 120 ish dollars but they do sound very very good they go to high volumes without any distortion the mids are full which is amazing for me you get a lot of speakers where the mids just are non-existent and it pains me to hear it but all you hear is just overdone treble or not enough treble and overdone bass and no mids and it's really really nice to see a speaker from creative these guys know what they're doing they're a proper proper sound company that know what they're doing it's really nice to have a really nice sounding set of speakers with plenty of mid tones in them. But overall, good bits, bad bits, negative, positive, all that kind of thing. Positives, um, they are very sleek design. They are slightly on the bigger side, but the lack of a subwoofer definitely means that they can be a little bit bigger without any uh, major problems. You've also, um, for me, got amazing sound quality out of these. I was astonished. When the bloke uh, from Creative sent these over, the first thing I Skype messaged him was, Oh my God, these sound amazing because they do. Obviously, once you've listened to them for hours and hours and hours and hours, uh, that kind of first excitement kind of rubs off a little bit, but I put them on the carpet, plugged them in, turned the volume up to max, and oh my god, these things were good. And they are very, very good speakers. They're coming at a nice price point. The power brick for some may be a bit of a hindrance, a bit of a pain, but it's not a deal breaker by any means. These things do go on automatic standby as well. So if you leave these for, I believe it's half an hour, they will uh, automatically turn off. This isn't a problem. You just push the power button in. It illuminates. It looks really, really good. It's got like a white LED ring that illuminates around the power and the Bluetooth buttons. So for some that might be really annoying because I have to lean over my monitor to turn the power button back on. But it's saving energy, so from that kind of perspective it's a win-win situation. So you can't really complain about that. But overall I was very impressed. The Bluetooth is fast, they sound amazing as I've said so many times. And the power brick is a bit unfortunate but it's not, it's not going to change your decision when buying these. These aren't going to be portable, you're not going to be taking these around like you would take uh, one of these like portable Bluetooth speakers around. So from that perspective the power brick if you can cable manage it isn't a major problem. But if you did enjoy this video make sure to drop a like rate and I'll leave Amazon US and UK links in the description as always below. And I'll see you in the next Geek or What video. We have a dedicated fibre glass woven. And on the top, we have a woven fibre glass dome. Oh, for God's sake. And on the top, we have a dedicated woven fibre glass driver. And on the top, we have a dedicated woven fibre glass cone driver. Dedicated woven glass fibre cone driver. And on the top, we have a dedicated. Dedicated woven glass fiber cone driver. Three, two, one. And on the top we have a dedicated <laughs> woven glass fiber cone driver.